Hello, my name is Myra and for today's video I wanted to talk about how I read, where I get my books from, and how you can read for free. So the most popular reading method is probably Kindle Unlimited. Um, now Kindle Unlimited is $11.99 a month if I'm not mistaken and yes it's $12 but if you really do the math depending on the type of reader that you are even if it's only one book a month that you're reading that's still cheaper than purchasing a book um, now of course i'm not talking about like thrifted books or books that you would get like secondhand or gifted because obviously then that would be free but if you're buying just a regular paperback from the store even if they're having a sale you're probably still looking at about eleven dollars i would say now i do live in california so that's kind of roughly i don't know if the price would depend on where you live but yeah so for me personally paying twelve dollars a month i tend to read about eight books a month so to me it's worth it if you do the math it just the math is mathing and they have such an extensive catalog that you really can get a lot of really really great books on there for pretty much free you can say or at least more cost effectively than buying a paperback now the other way that you can read and this is actually the best way that i've been finding especially for audiobooks is through the libby app that's l-i-b-b-y so libby i had heard about it but i never actually checked it out until a few months ago and when i went on there i'm like why haven't i been doing this since before so the libby app is completely free first of all and it connects you with the catalog for your local libraries now i thought you were going to be stuck with just picking one library but you can actually add multiple on there i currently have three on my libby app some of them at least i found on my personal like area you can just add Digitally, some of them you will have to go in and like sign up for a digital library card or at least a physical library card. I know some places might charge you like a library fee. I think my local one, if you want a physical one, I think they charge you like $2 to get the library card, like a physical one. But otherwise, it's pretty much free. I'm actually able to get audiobooks and I'm able to get Kindle books. Typically for like a Kindle book, you have it for about 21 days. Uh, for audiobooks, sometimes it's more like 14 days and it's awesome because not only can you check out multiple books at a time, but you can also put books on hold. So if it's a newer book, you can put it on hold and even if it's not available in that moment, you get a notification from the Libby app saying, hey, it's your turn now in line you can go ahead and borrow it if you're in the middle of another book you can also just tell the app like you know what send it back to me like in seven days or 14 days if someone does something like that where they skip it i get like a hey you're like if you're in luck this book is now available and you do have seven days to finish the book but sometimes when it's a book that i've really been like looking forward to i definitely am able to finish it within those seven days so i like the libby app for that um i also find that on there you can even check out physical books from the libby app so you could put them on hold even physically from your library i haven't done that just because I've been able to find either like the ebook version on the Libby app or the audio uh, version of it, but you could put them on hold. Now with that, I would say definitely don't forget about your local library. Go check out books. There's nothing wrong with checking out a book and not owning it physically. I personally have a book ban that I put on myself, like a book buying ban, because I found that I have at least 10 books that I owe like I own them physically and I haven't read them and I'm like mm, no like this is getting out of hand so I'm doing my best to not buy any new books and if I can't buy it if it's not on Kindle Unlimited I'm getting them through the Libby app so again Libby is like hands down such a great app and again it's free so you can literally read and enjoy popular books on there for free the newer ones you might have a longer wait but you still get to do it for free so it's worth it in my opinion another app similar like similar to libby that i've heard about is hoopla i haven't done that one yet just because for that one the local library that is on there is one that i have to go in physically and i just haven't gotten around to it but honestly i might do that today actually because i'm heading in that area so i might go in and like get a like physical library card but yeah i just think like 
don't forget about your library. Like it's okay, you don't have to buy it. If money's tight right now, go to your library and check it out. But I know Hoopla, I think it's only audiobooks, but I'm not 100% sure. Once I actually get my library card and I try it out, I can let you know. So like if you're interested in finding out, just leave me a comment and then as soon as I get my Hoopla set up, I will let you know. But that's another way that you can read for free. The other one too that you can do is you can sign up on NetGalley and NetGalley is typically for ARCs, but once in a while, there will be an author that for certain times are like, hey, you can just go ahead and click read now and you can get it on there. Now, the one thing with NetGalley is if it's a really popular author, unless you're like an active reviewer and you do get reviewed or like you get a percentage based on how like your books are, being rated so for example say i sign up for netgalley and i say okay i want this arc and they give me the arc or the book is on there available you have a certain time frame where you really should review the book now if you review it your rating like your percentage goes higher and i feel like that's how you can get approved in the long run for more popular arcs now you could try to get signed up for arcs for like other authors directly through either their websites or the publishing companies but for the most part they will be looking at you like to see okay are you like on booktube are you a bookstagrammer like are you a content creator and i do think that some of them especially the more popular ones are gonna have a tougher criteria i have gotten you know notifications where it's like thank you for applying for this arc but you didn't get it and that's fine it's understandable they're limited to how many arcs that they can give out and sometimes if it's a really popular author they're going to be really selective and probably choose a creator that has a higher following it sucks but it is a way that you can potentially read for free in exchange for like a truthful and honest review so that's definitely another way that you can read um, another really fun thing that you can do is book swaps. I actually, it kind of started by accident. Um, I haven't given her a book to borrow, but my sister-in-law actually let me borrow two books. She's like, hey, you know what? I read these, I love them, and I think that you would like them too. And she just kind of let me borrow them. So you never know, a check in your area, try seeing if maybe um, there's any like book media, like book clubs in your area and try to do book swaps with them, meet other people, maybe even on social media that you guys can potentially swap books with. Um, obviously be safe and be careful when it comes to all that stuff. But I, I have checked, um, there's an app called Meetup and Meetup actually is for just a lot of different types of groups and they are in your area and again, be safe but um, I found that there's some locally that have book clubs. So that could be a way of like making friends and also kind of swapping ideas about a book that you guys all read and potentially, you know, maybe bringing up other books that you haven't read that they read and maybe you guys can let each other borrow the book. Again, it doesn't have to be like expensive to want to be a reader. If it's within your budget, buy the book. But if it's not, that's another great way that you can get your hands on more books while also making friends and it's a win-win all around those are my ideas with how you can get away with getting more books and reading more books potentially for free or at least on a more budget-friendly option um, you can also like i said you can go to thrift stores and see if you can get some secondhand books i know my library has had book sales where you can literally get them for like a quarter so you never know like it doesn't hurt to go and like check it out and find these books but if you really want to like read them for free i hope that maybe some some of these tips especially the Libby app if there's one that you're gonna check out go check out the Libby app because I slept on that app for so long and this is not sponsored it's like a free app but it is so so worth it especially because again you can check out multiple books you can listen to audiobooks or read them on Kindle and it's just a very seamless easy process if anyone wants me to make a video like particularly walking you through Libby and getting that all set up, I'm more than happy to do it. Or if you just want to message me, I can walk you through how to do it. So just let me know. But anyway, I hope that this is helpful for anyone out there who is trying to read more books but is on a budget or just simply does not want to buy books right now. Totally fine. But I hope it helped out and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.